This video provides an overview of the new U.S. Geological Survey Chesapeake Bay Science Strategy, which summarizes our science efforts to inform restoration and conservation decisions by managers and stakeholders in the Chesapeake watershed. We began formulating the strategy in 2020 and implementing it in 2021. The strategy addresses important issues in the Chesapeake Bay watershed, which provides ecosystem goods and services that are valued at nearly $100 billion annually. But the bay and its watershed are suffering from declining fisheries and wildlife populations due to poor water quality and loss of habitat. Some of the root causes are related to land development and climate change. The Chesapeake Restoration is coordinated by the Chesapeake Bay Program, a federal-state partnership across six states and multiple federal agencies. USGS is the primary science agency in the effort, and our Chesapeake strategy was designed to meet the needs of the Bay Program and USGS priorities. Many of the issues in the Chesapeake are common in estuaries across the country. The Bay Program works through a series of voluntary agreements, the latest signed in 2014. Many of the goals set in 2014 need to be met by 2025. The goals are both restoration and conservation oriented. They include trying to restore fisheries and waterfowl by improving water quality and habitats they depend on, both in the estuary and the watershed. There are also conservation goals of trying to maintain healthy watersheds through land protection. Finally, there are goals to get the 18 million people in the watershed more involved in collective stewardship. However, the deadlines of the watershed agreement are approaching and the partnership needs to accelerate restoration and conservation efforts. If we are to achieve these goals, there also needs to be a greater emphasis placed on climate change. The strategy includes climate change and enhancing diversity, which are important Department of Interior priorities. Our first theme relates how what happens in the watershed affects stream health, fish habitat, and water quality. Secondly, we're also working to better understand the impact of climate change and sea level rise on coastal habitats, which are important for water birds and waterfowl. Our third theme looks at land use change data and forecasting to inform watershed management. Finally, our last theme, we're taking an integrated science approach that engages stakeholders to inform complex management decisions. Let's give you an overview of each theme. Theme one looks at how stream health, habitat, and water quality conditions affect many important recreational and commercial fisheries in the watershed, such as brook trout, smallmouth, and largemouth bass. Stream habitat for these fish species is being degraded by stressors from land use change as well as climate change. So our approach looks at how different stressors like water quality, toxic contaminants, and invasive species affect fish populations. As management approaches are being implemented, we're also assessing whether we're seeing the desired habitat and water quality responses. We're looking at various places, including cold headwaters, streams, rivers, and watershed areas that affect the estuary. The science is really important to stakeholders like EPA, NRCS, and the states who are implementing nutrient sediment practices to improve water quality in the bay. Additionally, these findings are being used by U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for developing best practices in habitat management to improve conditions for wildlife and fish populations. These studies are being conducted across the entire watershed and in local areas. This is important because it allows resource managers across the six states, as well as our federal partners, to focus where they want to try to install restoration and conservation activities. We can also use computer models to forecast future conditions to predict how land and habitat can be vulnerable to climate change and development. All of our science is predicated on a strong foundation of monitoring. We use information that's been collected from multiple agencies on these stream and fish conditions, and USGS also directly monitors stream habitat and water quality conditions. This information provides input for both our regional assessments and our local studies. We also can look at the current status and change over time of these data. This map shows you an example of looking at nitrogen change over time with the blue showing improving conditions and the orange showing degrading conditions. This information is used by EPA, USDA, and the states to help understand the effectiveness of their water quality practices. Our second theme is focused more on the coastal areas. 
These areas are important because they're right in the heart of the Atlantic Flyway, and we have almost a million wintering waterfowl each year. So we're trying to look at these nearshore areas that are important, not only for waterfowl, but for the 10 million people who live here and can be affected by sea level rise and other coastal pressures. You can see in this diagram where sea level rise can affect the nearshore habitats for submerged aquatic vegetation and coastal wetlands. So we are doing studies to forecast how these marshes migrate in response to sea level rise and which areas are most vulnerable over time. We want to relate these changes in coastal habitat to how they might affect migratory birds, including their food sources and even the potential for disease transmission, such as avian influenza. Our third theme is important because understanding how the land changes and how the land is used really affects habitat and water quality throughout the watershed. In this theme, we are focused on providing better land cover and land use data. In partnership with the Chesapeake Conservancy, we have improved our land cover data from 30 meters down to a one meter resolution. This improved information lets managers focus their efforts, better understand changes over time, and allows us to forecast these changes into the future. This information is being used by the National Park Service and state and local partners to inform land protection decisions. Our last theme is to work in an integrated way so all the individual pieces complement each other. We have an emphasis on data sharing and close interaction with decision makers within the Bay Program. This is where federal, state, and local managers interact with scientists to help inform decisions and assess the effectiveness of those policies and management approaches. USGS scientists are represented on all the different goal teams as well as selected work groups. Through these stakeholder discussions, we not only provide the science, but translate it to make it more relevant to managers and informative to decision makers. These studies are done by USGS scientists across the Northeast, shown in these different science center locations on the diagram. So if you want more information, here are the websites for the Chesapeake Bay Program, the USGS Chesapeake Bay activities, and the science strategy for which this video is based on. And finally, if you want information on the Chesapeake Bay coordinators, it's listed here.